Good morning. Today we are going to use Newton's second law to find the force of friction between a street hockey puck and a wooden board. Hey guys. Hey Bob. Hi, hi Bob. Flippin' physics. I know we haven't specifically defined the force of friction yet, however, we can still find its magnitude. Bo, could you please read the problem? You slide a 56 gram street hockey puck on a wooden board. The graph of its velocity as a function of time is shown. What is the magnitude of the force of friction between the puck and the wooden board? To be clear, the black squares are the experimentally observed data, and the blue line is a best fit line that best approximates and interpolates the data. Again, black squares are observed data, and blue line is a best fit line. All right, here we go. What do we know from the problem? We know the mass of the puck is 56 grams. Uh, we're looking for the force of friction, so that equals question mark. Uh, and uh, we, we have the equation for the velocity as a function of time. Velocity equals 4.38 times time minus 2.77 in meters per second. However, I, I'm not sure... Um, oh, wait. Oh, that's the slope-intercept form of an equation for a line, or y equals mx plus b. So then 4.38 is the slope, and negative 2.77 is the y-intercept. Right, and, and the slope of a velocity versus time graph is acceleration, so the acceleration of the hockey puck is 4.38 meters per second squared. And the y-intercept is negative 2.77 meters per second, which is the initial velocity of the hockey puck. Very nice. Bo, what do we do next? We need to draw the free body diagram. Billy, could you please do that? Uh, sure. Uh, the force of gravity is straight down. The force normal is perpendicular to the wooden board and a push, so the force normal is up. The force of friction is opposite the direction the puck is moving, so the force of friction is to the right. And you pushed it to the left, so the force applied is to the left. Great. I love this free body diagram because it highlights a common mistake that students make. One of the forces is actually not in this free body diagram. Does anybody know which one? The force applied because it's a, it's a contact force and you don't, you don't push it the whole time, only at the beginning. But it has to be there. You, you just said it. He, he pushed the hockey puck, so he applied a force to it. Bobby, you are correct that there is no force applied in our free body diagram. And Billy, you are correct that I did apply a force to the puck. I applied a force to the puck to give it an initial velocity of negative 2.77 meters per second. And the graph of velocity as a function of time is after I give it that initial velocity to the left. So the free body diagram we're drawing is after I release the puck while it is slowing down. Because the force applied is a contact force, this is what it would have to look like for the force applied to be in our free body diagram. Clearly, my hand was not on the puck while it was sliding and slowing down. Now that we have the correct free body diagram, Bobby, what should we do next? We need to sum the forces in the x-direction, so the net force in the x-direction is a positive force of friction, and that's the only force in the x-direction, so uh, that equals mass times acceleration in the x-direction, so the force of friction is 56 times 4.38, which is 245.28, or uh, with two sig figs, 250 newtons. We end up with a force of friction of roughly 250 newtons, and because one pound is equal to 4.448 newtons, that works out to be roughly 55 pounds. And I will tell you that a force of friction of 55 pounds for something with such a small mass would be unusually large. So we made a mistake. Does anybody know what we forgot to do? We forgot to convert the mass from grams to kilograms. Uh, right. Because a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, we need the mass in kilograms. Uh, so let's multiply the 56 grams by one kilogram over a thousand grams to get 0 0.056 kilograms for the mass of the puck. And substituting that back into our equation just gives us 0 0.24528 or with two sig figs, 0 0.25 newtons.
That is correct. So the force of friction between the street hockey puck and the wooden board is approximately one-fourth of a newton. One last thing to talk about. Would you all agree that the street hockey puck is slowing down? Yes. yes. The puck is slowing down. Then Billy, why is the acceleration positive? Uh, I thought that a positive acceleration meant that the object was speeding up. Oh, oh uh, because the velocity of the puck is negative and the direction of the acceleration needs to be opposite the direction of the velocity to slow the object down. Correct. If the acceleration and velocity are in the same direction, then the object will speed up. And if the velocity and acceleration are in opposite directions, then the object will slow down. So because the velocity of the puck is to the left and negative, the acceleration needs to be to the right and positive to slow the puck down. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.